Hello, Kayla. Hey, Dana. Hey. Uh, okay, so we're here in Camden, obviously, yep. and uh, we were chatting yesterday at the range during Fighting Pistol, and we thought we might make this video. So the video is going to be um, three parts. Why should you take a professional instruction class in firearms? And then why would you take it here at Tactical Response? And then what would what would probably be helpful for you to know before you get here so that when you get here, you get the most out of your class? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so this came up, so um, by way of background, I've been coming here, uh, I don't know, 12 years or something. And of course you grew up here. Uh, yeah, I grew up in this it. Is, this is your home. <laughs> I, st I took my first, I think actually my first class was an ops class. Like that's how long, like since the nineties. So, <laughs> so we've, a, it's a long time. So like that that's insurance commercial, we're... we've seen a few things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, and then yesterday I was having a conversation with a student in the class. I won't, I won't say who, but um, there was a student in the class that sort of prompted me to grab you um, and make some arrangements for that student so that that student had a better experience here. And then we mm -hmm. got to talk an offline about, doing this yep okay so um why a class why should you take a professional instruction class at all um i guess my answer would be two things one is the i've long since lost count of the number of people who come to a class and their background is they were in the army my grandpappy taught me how to shoot i've been carrying a gun my whole life i was always around guns they they have a a sense of 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 competency that in a class, it is revealed to them an inflated, an inflated sense, sense of competency. <laughs> um, and I want to, I want to say, and we'll come back to this, but I want to say that the, the these epiphany moments for these people do not happen because someone yells at them. Nope, at all, ever. Nope. Um, they happen because they realize organically and and you know honestly that holy cow, um, particularly a class like Fighting Pistol, um, they realize during Fighting Pistol that they're even if their skills were good. There's a difference in shooting with a gun right, and fighting right, with a gun. That's right. There's minds yeah. there like like the ability to go to a, a range on a Saturday and 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 pop off a box and make nine Marksmanship yeah, masturbation. Right. <laughs> right. So um or bullet golf. Um so um so the why a class, I would say that I've long since lost count of the number of people who come here and during class look at one of the instructors, you know, and say to me or you or whoever and say, wow, I didn't know. I can't believe I've been walking around carrying a gun for this long. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so glad nothing bad ever happened because I didn't realize how unprepared I really was. Mm -hmm. That happens all the time. And then I guess the second why I take a class that um, any class uh, uh, and I mean, aside from the fact that, you know, like James has spent and all of the instructors here have spent countless of their own time and money taking classes from other instructors. Mm -hmm. So if your instructors are taking classes from instructors, that's a clue. Yeah. Um, I guess I would say that the analogy that I would give for why I take a class is this. If I told you that in 365 days you had to play a legitimate round of golf and shoot a par. And if you didn't, we were going to hang you on the 18th green. How would you manage that? Okay. I suspect that if I told you that that was going to be the problem, that in exactly one year, we were going to, you were going to have to play golf in front of everyone. And if you didn't shoot a legitimate par, we were going to hang you when you were done. I suspect that you would quickly make the following plan. Your plan would be, I guess I should get some really good clubs that are appropriate for me in my circumstance. Yes. So you would go to a club, golf club Before store. Before that, I would contact a professional to recommend clubs for me. Right. So I was. I don't know nothing about right, exactly. golf. So right. Like so baseline. Right. So, um, so, uh, or I was thinking maybe you go to the club store and, mm -hmm. and there is the professional. You walk in, you go, I don't know anything about golf, but I got to play real good in a year. See, that doesn't work with gun stores though. Well, that's true. <laughs> As, that, a, as a girl who right. grew up like actually knowing this right. stuff yeah. and walking into a gun store right. and seeing so, the old man behind the counter right. try to pass me a little pink one. Right. So we like. we did the video, um, the the evolution of or the the evolution of a gun guy, 
Um, <clears throat> so see that. Also see James's all guns should be Glocks and all yeah. Glocks should be 19s. So there's the answer to that. Yeah. But you would go to the golf club store either with or without a recommendation and you would get the clubs that were appropriate for you that fit your budget. Yes. Step one, right? Step two, I would say you would probably know that you needed to go find a good instructor. Absolutely. Right. Go get a good instructor and you would probably spend as much time and money with that instructor as you could afford mm -hmm. getting instruction. Right. And I suspect when you weren't getting professional instruction, you would go to the range and practice what the instructor told you. A lot. A lot. Probably. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Consistently. Yes. Right. Not once a year. You wouldn't go once a year and hit 5000 balls. Nope. You would probably try to play, you probably try to go to the range and play as often as you could or practice as often as you could. And you probably play some golf. Dry swings. Right, dry swings. <laughs> and if, probably at one point when you felt somewhat confident about it, you probably go play golf and test yourself, maybe even against another golfer with a little pressure, right? Um, so that's probably how you would manage the play par golf in a year or get hung problem, yeah. right? I'll tell you what you probably wouldn't do. You probably wouldn't go on Saturday to the golf club store and buy the most expensive, coolest golf clubs that were on the cover of Golf Magazine last month and then turn around next week and go back and buy another set. And then when the next issue of Golf Magazine came out, you probably wouldn't go buy yet another bag of clubs that because you already had two. Do they have like grip changes? And right, stuff exactly, for right. Specific you probably clubs, wouldn't like go. <laughs> you probably wouldn't go to the golf store. You probably wouldn't go to the range and shank a bunch of balls, blame the balls, go back to the golf store and buy different balls. That's probably not what you would do, right? I mean, I don't know. I've I've seen that kind of ego. So. Well, that okay. So you, the analogy is is clear, right? Like, yeah. This is precisely what we see all the time in in gun world, right? Mm -hmm. Like in firearms, this is the community versus culture that James has talked about at length. This is, you know, so um, why take a class? Because if you don't take a class, you don't even know what you don't know. And if you don't take a class, then you're just at best, you're, you're, you're hardening and integrating bad habits yep. that are gonna have to be broken when you do get a professional instruction. And even if you have somebody in your life who is good at it, if you swap spit with them, save your relationship. Right. Like, right. Go to a professional. Right. Save your relationship. Right. You don't want like James Yeager does not teach Rebecca Yeager how to do this stuff. Right. Right. He hires other people to do that for him. Right. And <laughs> and let's just say that I was a scratch golfer. Me. Okay. That does not mean that my skills are transferable to anyone I pick. Just because you know doesn't mean you Just because I teach. can do doesn't mean I can teach. Yep. Okay. So um, so the fact that your, you know, grandpappy was first marksman in the army or whatever doesn't mean that he uh, can teach you anything. Nothing. No. Um, and just because you went to basic or, you know, were in the army or went through the police academy or any of those things, no disrespect to them. But they are looking to impart a minimum level of proficiency. Mm -hmm. And that's what that, like the mill spec. Yeah. Like for gear, like training, all of it, it is minimum. Like what you can put to the most masses. Right. And like biggest right. bang for your right. buck. You, 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 and the coursework is everything is, is delivered knowing that there is a lowest common denominator. Yeah. So it's unfortunate, but it's true. True. Right. So why a class that's got to, I mean, there's probably a, aside from the, the fun. Um, the other thing I would tell you about the golf analogy is um, if you did get through that one year, by the way, um, in the golf analogy, I gave you 365 days to get ready. In the gun problem, it could be today, right? So, like, if it quick it, side note, like, for especially women, we we don't always do things to protect ourselves. Like, we're, I don't know if it's just, the nurturers or whatever, but we will let things happen to us just to keep from inconveniencing someone else. But when you have children, it's no longer about you. It's right. about your kids. Right. So if the like thinking that you're not worth it, like your kids are though. Like right. I think you are. And right. but if if you can't grasp that concept, like like if you told me, hey, you got 365 days to get ready for a golf tournament and have to hit a certain score, right. 
or your kids are gonna die. Oh yeah. Like right. Okay. That doubles down right, for yeah. me. Right. 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 And it, you have to be able to. Protect you have your got kids. the soccer mom look mastered. You Alex really is just like I don't know when you turn into a total soccer mom, but, but you here have. You are. Like, here you are. Okay. Okay. So I think that's probably why a class. Yeah. Um, okay. Then okay, why here at Tactical Response? I'm not going to speak negatively as to anywhere. No. Th th those are all. There are lots and lots and lots of places that you can go teach. Everybody or go has take a, a niche. Class. Yeah. And ours just happens to be fighting with guns. Right. So um, so to me, the why here um, has probably got to do at least with two things. One is just the curriculum and the competency and the instruction. Like if even if you came here, walked in, took the class, left, never came back. The skill, the, the competency of the and the, the, the strength of the curriculum and the instruction is, and I've been to lots of name brand instructions, uh, instructors, and I'm not gonna, I'm not, not placing them on a scale relative to tactical response. I would tell you that, um, well, even this weekend, a name brand instructor is in class mm -hmm. taking fighting pistol. Yep. So, um, if name brand instructors um, are going to come here and pay to be in class and take their time away from what they're doing. And take this class. Um, I think that I think that speaks to the strength of the curriculum and the instruction here. Mm -hmm. But one thing with which I've become intimately familiar is it, when you come to tactical response. The interesting thing about tactical response is that um, anyone can select themselves in, right? Yep. Like anyone with the internet or a phone yeah. <laughs> can arrive here, right? And then once you're here, okay, you're here. Cool. Come on in. Tell us your name what the fuck's up with you, right? Um, some people will return over and over and over again mm -hmm. and become part of the family, right? And um, I was having this conversation with a student last night because this student was remarking upon what the how different the experience was that she was having than what she was expecting, okay? Um, and I told her, well, that's, that's culture um, because we police this place rigorously yes um, um unfortunately um one of the downsides to being an open environment where you can just select yourself in is that um occasionally um the misfit toys that have been cast off from other places <laughs> <laughs> or just you know people that don't fit for yeah. whatever reason um and so um i'm not afraid to say it um we put people out yes um <clears throat> and the rules are pretty simple here um, be honorable, um, treat people with respect. Um, don't be a thief. Don't be a liar. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't have to be perfect. We'll work with you. Right. Like, there's a lot of people who've come through here and you can watch the arc of their life change for mm -hmm. the better. So it's not that you have to be some, you know, strong, upstanding, noble citizen when you get here. Um, just that you're striving for that yeah. once you are here. Right. Because I, I, like I said earlier, I've lost count of the number of people who've come here and stuck around and hung around and come back over and over and over again. And you watch them grow mm -hmm. um, from whatever they were to something where they're happy with what they are. Right. For, like since I grew up in this, I don't really know anything else. Right. But I do know what makes us different because I've went to other places and trained and like the people who come through here really do become that family. Right. Like I have been <clears throat> in multiple states with Alex in the military, no matter where I was. Like when we moved to San Antonio, David Crawford let me stay at his house for a week. Like him and his wife invited me into their home, let me stay there free of charge. They fed me, <laughs> they helped me get my apartment ready and then helped me at the apartment and his wife would take me out to dinner every once a week like it was it was a, a family and we have that in every place in the country yeah so not only do i think that we're the best at what we do as far as that that niche of fighting with a gun like i think that we are the best at maintaining friendships and a family style environment yeah. like we're not just here 
to make money. Right. And th this is a business, but it is run by a family. Yeah. And um, and the family is the blood relatives, but the but also the the friends and the and the and the colleagues. It's not even the blood relatives. Right. Like right. I mean. So and Heather and I did a podcast that hasn't been released yet, but well, don't uh, ruin it. Because like, I don't know what's going to come out first, well, no. but go ahead. Uh, James is actually not my biological dad. Right. But you call him dad. But he's my dad. Right. And so blood means nothing here. Right. It doesn't count. <laughs> it does, it, well, it doesn't get you a free pass, that's no. for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and um, you will be measured by the, <clears throat> by your behavior and the content of your character. Yes. Even if that, even if it, even if you show up here and you're broken, mm -hmm. like you just got to not do be a persistent bad actor yep. right like you, you you can and there have been plenty of people show up here more or less at the worst part of their life and over time you watch them recover or succeed um authenticity authenticity yeah that is what we're right so the <laughs> rules are pretty simple um and um you know i i'll give you an example of the team room um uh I would have no hesitation whatsoever about having my wife jump in the car, drive down here, or stay in the team room without me, um, and I don't even need to know who's there. Yep. Right? Like, that. that's just the way that goes. My kids, those little precious assholes <laughs> that, that I birthed. <laughs> the goblins. Yeah, the goblins that I would do anything for. Um, they have been around students from day one, like from the moment they're born. Right. We've had them around. And I was like, they're the easiest kids in the world to kidnap, but also the most dangerous. Right. Well, because we do have this thing here. Right. Yeah. You're probably going to have to sit your kids down when they go to leave Camden and be like, now listen. Not everybody is the, like right. that. Right. The, the rest of the world is not like this. Yeah. You have been surrounded by hundreds and thousands of of caring and law abiding and, and, and good, good people, people uh, your whole life. And it ain't like that out there. So, no. so if, if I will let my kids be around it. Like, I don't see a higher stamp of approval from a parent than allowing their kids to partake. Right. Um, okay. Uh, to that end, the student, I was talking to a student last night at the campfire. Um, and um, this particular student was telling me the difference between what she expected and what she was getting. And one of the things she said was that she had resisted for a long time because an alumni, a, a good friend of ours, had been trying to get her to come. And she was like, I don't, I, I'm not going there. And, dealing with all those, you know, camo bros and, and, and what, you know, like what camo in her bros and GI right, Joe's. Right. Well, all in her mind was one thing. And she said she got here and she was just like, I can't believe the professionalism and the, you know, the camaraderie and the, like how, and the word she used that really struck me was how safe she felt and not safe. Like no one pointed a gun at her, like safe. Mm -hmm. She was in a safe space. This is coming from a woman who'd never met any of us. Yep. Sitting at a campfire with a bunch of camo bros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Because that's what it was at the bonfire was the, the, right. the more camo bros from class. Right. But, um, and it's funny because when we first like really started growing, it was a lot more male dominated and guys who had been doing this for a while and were just looking for more. Right. And we've completely shifted to like. I look more like the average student now. Yeah, I think, I mean, just in the time that I've been here, it has sort of... <laughs> little chubby, little mom. Yeah, mom <laughs> soccer girl, moms. Like, mini soccer van. moms, minivans. Uh, by the way, I'm going to rat you out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got in your van yesterday, and I said to you, did you rob Walmart like three times? Yeah, you said that. It's, it's a thing. And then at the bonfire... We're right, you, you Emmeline fell right in the I mud. Had a change of like clothes. she was, yeah. she might as well have fallen in a river. Yeah, so she was completely covered in mud. We got her fresh clothes. Um, Gage was uh, wanting a blanket. Right, there was I, a blanket. I found like 12 chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> like when we got hungry, thirsty, like I got snacks, drinks, like Capri Suns and goldfish. I like <laughs> my, my kids are older, so I'm not used to getting in a car and having like extra clothes and <laughs> snacks and yeah. juice boxes and shit like that anyway mm -hmm. um so culturally again not to i'm not comparing it favorably or unfavorably anywhere else i can just tell you that here um you can bring your wife your sister your daughter your niece whoever um uh and skill level doesn't matter mm -mm. um 
yesterday we had a student in class that had, um, I would say it was pretty clear pretty quickly that no, she had limited experience, yeah. maybe none. Um, and we've got what, like almost 40 students in class. Mm -hmm. So we had a, we had a bunch of people out there, um, all the, uh, you know, like all the instructors and a whole, and a handful of like multi-class alumni out there to make it go smooth. And, um, I saw what was going on with her and I was like, Kayla, like, so she got, <laughs> she got three fourths of a day out of one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. personal instruction. Like just down at the end, like we still end. were doing drills with everybody, but we were walking her through the steps because her gun malfunctioned during our like foundational right, drills, like, day, like the like ones that the very right beginning the of class. So we were playing a little bit of catch up on top of her. She never was falling behind. Shot. Yep. Be she was falling behind because her gear didn't work. Yep. And, and so it was becoming frustrating and overwhelming fast. And I was like, let's get her, let's get her out of this, mm -hmm. send her to see you. And then... By lunch, right, she was caught up, right, and I saw pictures of her doing the ground fighting because I had to go to an Easter egg hunt yesterday with the kids. I saw pictures and videos of her doing the ground fighting drills, and I was just like, "Are you sure?" Like, right. wow, right. So it it right. like gave okay. me the, so yeah the, the Grinch stuff. Right. Well, that's the, <laughs> right. That's the thing. Right. Is that that's. That's what you can expect here. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that. I've seen some iteration or variation of that happen countless times. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. So that's why I take a class and why here. Um, let's turn to the practical. What could we tell you right here that you can get on the Internet days, weeks or months before you come that would be helpful for you to know before you get here so that when you get here, you can get the most out of your class. And I, um, you and I talked about this a bit and I went around last night and even this morning and asked some of the students and I found, I tracked down and, and asked first time ever students. Mm -hmm. Like some of the, some of the feedback I got was from people who'd never been anywhere to take any kind of an instruction at all. Um, and some of them have, um, and some of them had never been here. They may have had some or little or a lot of, of commercial training somewhere else, but never here. Um, so, um, I, I think the, the one theme that came through to me was that, um, uh, be prepared to be overwhelmed. Yes. Right. Like just be ready. If you get the feeling when you get here, whatever class that it's just coming at you so fast, that's, a, that's normal. Yes. That's appropriate. Just hang on. It's going to be okay. Um, even the dudes. Even the dudes. Especially the dudes. The dudes yep. Right? Because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the dudes show up and they've been carrying a gun for 20 years and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Okay, cool. Um, dudes get ego invested mm -hmm. in knowing how to do already. Like, it's like, I think you might have more success telling some of these dudes how to use their own penis than how, than how to use I'm, a gun. I think you're overestimating them. <laughs> the number of guys who know how to do that, too. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm not an expert on that. <laughs> I'll trust you. I'll take your word for it. Um, but um, I can't help it. I know. It's mean. But um, but the, the the be prepared to be overwhelmed. Yes. Um, it, because especially like fighting pistol, um, we have an instructor in the class this weekend. Name brand instructor. I'm not going to call his name just because I didn't ask him if I could. But you would know his name if I said it. Um, so. I'm going to be doing a video with him. You'll find out. Okay. So it's not a big back. secret. No, it's just, come back I, I didn't ask him if I could yeah. mention it. So I'm not going to name drop like that. But, um, so, um, he was talking last night about the fact that he is just amazed at the fact that we get people in here who might've bought a pistol this week, mm -hmm. come to this class. And by the end of day one, they are moving their feet and pulling the trigger, pressing the trigger at the same time. And yes. shooting and mo and hitting a target mm -hmm. with other people standing around. Yep. He's like, in my class, you would take a three-day class. You would never move. In his foundational mm -hmm. number one class, you you would work on precision and accuracy and 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 skills, but that would never include moving your feet and shooting on the move. And he's like, I, it's different. I'm not saying his is better or worse. He's just saying it's amazing to me that you can bring forty people who've never met some of whom have never been in a class at all. And uh, in between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., they go from whatever they arrived to um, weaving in and out of barrels, shooting a metal silhouette 
um, with and a handgun. hitting the target and and making the hits. Mm-hmm. So, but if we had told those people yesterday morning, hey, by the end of the day, you're going to do this, <laughs> a lot of them would have been like, "There's no way that's going to happen," <laughs> and and another bunch of them would have been like, "I don't even want to watch that happen." Yeah, right. I mean, because there's you know there's a certain um, we do get the we do get the range safety not Nazis sometimes. Um, yeah. So um, be prepared to be overwhelmed. Be one thing. What do you got? Um, we're not kidding when the first thing on the gear list is have an open mind. Right. And be open to being told like, hey, there's something going on with your gear. Because there are people here who know about that. Right. <laughs> like they're pretty good at it, in yeah. fact. So be like, take that part. That is more important than anything else you're bringing with you to class is showing up with an open mind. Right. Like everything else we can provide you with. Right. You could, you, you, you can. And, and, and I, I would almost go so far as to say, maybe you should <sighs> come to this class with nothing Yeah. and rent yep. or borrow. You will have to have a belt. We okay. A belt. Belts. We don't yeah. have a belt, but, but like I would, um, uh, Okay, so just picking up on the things to know beforehand. The open mind Mm -hmm. goes to, like, probably best if you just commit to never saying something like, well, that's not how they taught me to do it at XYZ or in the Army or my grandpappy, Mm -hmm. right? Like, if you're being asked to do something here, it's been vetted, it's been done, it's and there's a reason. If I can unload and show clear during a class... (laughs) You can do what we say. <laughs> right. And we do the same thing. Like when we go to other places, we do what they tell us to yes. do. I took a class with an instructor whose name I'm not going to drop. But um, it was, I was sitting there going, I will never, in a, I will never, ever, ever, this, I am going to leave this particular part of the instruction here. I'm not taking this part with me. Mm-hmm. But I did it because yes. it's their class. And I'm, I, you know, I'm open enough to 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 accept to receive it and consider it. Mm-hmm. So the unload and show clear condition four or whatever the fuck they call that. Um, I did it for for a week with this particular instructor, and you know it's all driven by lowest common denominator safety standards. Mm-hmm. Fine. Um, I had a conversation with a student on the line yesterday, and he said, "So should I keep my gun loaded?" I said, "Please do, yeah. <laughs> please do, because we've seen that if you actually keep your gun loaded, you're more likely to treat it as if it's loaded." Right. So, um, yeah, one. open mind on not only your gear and but also like your approach to being instructed. Mm-hmm. Um, on the gear issue, I would say this: um, f- this is especially true for fighting pistol. Um, for fighting pistol, if you are a regular carry, concealed carry or, or, or civilian carrier, um, preferably concealed, that's another video. Um, if you are a concealed carrier, pl- I would suggest come to fighting pistol the way you walk out of your house. And I'm going to add on to that. <clears throat> if you are bringing a gun yourself and it, you're not renting one here. The only thing that should be changed on it are the sights. I, yeah, I can live with that. Like right? that's the only modification like, that should a, be made to that gun. Ju- yesterday, mm-hmm. yesterday we had a student show up and drill one, step one, day one, gun won't work. And so I'm. And now this is this student is here with all the tuition, all the ammo, all the travel, the time off from work, whatever all their costs were. Mm-hmm. And we get to the line and the gun doesn't work. And not only does it not work, I take it apart. I can't fix it. I look for someone else. And I'm like, hey, see if you can fuck with this and get this thing running. No, it's completely fucked. Yeah. This gun was never going to work until it had been it completely dis. One round. Yeah. Like literally the trigger went back and it wouldn't go back forward. And we want you to bring guns to this class that you would trust your life with. Right. Because this is like you figuring out which gun you want. Like you have that practice one, then you go buy a brand new one, make sure it works, and put it. James told me like replacing the locks of the house. I'd have the cops break into my house the other day. Gatlin locked me out, um, <laughs> but we broke the doorknob. You should call him Goblin. <laughs> and uh, James is like, when you put a new lock on your house, you have a master key. Make sure it works, and then put it up. 
Right. Then you have your other keys that you use all the time. Right. When you go to need a new key, you use that master key. So your carry gun should be your master key. Right. But it should be the exact same. Right. As the guns you're training. With. Right. If I own a gun, I own three. Yeah. Of the same thing, at least. So, um, I, I, I would say if you're coming to fighting pistol in particular, or, or use your carry gun. <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah, I would say if you're coming to fighting pistol in particular, walk. Come to fighting pistol the way you walk out of the house. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's, you know, appendix carry Glock big stick em, knife, you know, spare magazine, tourniquet, flashlight, you know, like this is how I walk up to fighting pistol. Um, I would tell you, um, if you if you are not someone who wears a drop leg holster for work every day, Don't bear fighting pistol that. class is probably not the place to get out your Gucci gear and, um, and do uh, action hero cosplay. Nope. You won't get as much out of the class, okay? Train like you fight. I would say train like you live. Yeah. Right. Like um, that. Yeah. Right. Um, and That's and why so I'm taking it from my purse more than one. <laughs> right. So so the the life cycle of a gun guy. There's also what I've seen kind of like the the arc of tactical response student. Mm -hmm. um, you can almost always and you know I've I don't even know I've been out here dozens hundreds of times maybe and taken dozens of classes. Um, you can always tell the the first time like fighting rifle guy. Mm -hmm. Because the first time fighting rifle guy frequently has like 900 pounds of shit. I mean, a you know, 17, mag right? 17 blade mag carrier. blade carrier and like fucking everywhere. Right. Um, Rook, someone we know, and I'm not going to call them out because they're going to know who they are. Switched out their plates midway through the week. Just took them out. Yep. But kept wearing the carrier mm. during a class. You know who you are. <laughs> Because I've called him out on it. And then when I was like picking on him for it, for taking them off, uh, he was just like, well, how long did you wear it? I was like, I didn't start with any. Right. Like, that's that's not the point. Okay, so, so we're kind of jumping any. around. But okay, yeah. so um, if, you, if you don't, it, especially in pistol, fighting pistol, just come Show the way up. you walk out of the house. Yes. All right. Um, bef but before you do that, test your shit. Yes. Right. Like you're going to get to class and almost without exception, you're going to figure out that this magazine you've been carrying over here in this thing sucks when it actually comes to doing the thing. Yep. It may be great to like get in and out of the car. It may be great to like comfortable or whatever. But when you actually have to get a magazine out uh, with your off hand or with your gun hand, whatever in the drills we're doing, um, you know, so I'm not saying come here the way you walk out of the house and refuse to modify. Right. I'm just saying, don't go get all your, what's those gun game classes? You, IP, S, what? Oh, IPCA or? What, whatever they are. Or, it, all the gun yeah. game classes, or all the gun game events. Um, it, you know, if you, if you got like six speed load magazines and stuff, if that's not how you're walking around at Walmart, don't go to don't come to class like that. This is not a speed class. There's no, there's, I've been to, one class here that had a timer mm -hmm. and that class was called fast and accurate pistol and it's the only class i've ever seen and probably ever will see here with a beeper timer thing yeah the shot yeah. yeah and even then we were all doing it concealed i think we have a fast and accurate rifle now. okay yeah. so if it's called fast and accurate yeah if we are focused on accuracy and and it's called speed, fast right like getting those two things together then but otherwise right so um so test your gear, vet your gear, make sure your gear works. And if you're bringing someone that you care about, mm -hmm. please don't give them shitty gear. Nope. Right? Like, please, and please don't give the person you're bringing what you think is cool. Yep. Let that person have some agency in picking their own gun and make sure that they're comfortable with it. And expensive does not equal quality. Right. No. Let, I, like, it, sight unseen, the Glock 19 is the answer for 90% yep. of people. Yes. So. I also recommend the Smith & Wesson Shield. Shield. Um, or the M&P series. Yeah, Whatever. The, it, M &P, one of those yeah. three modern polymer, semi-automatic, mm -hmm. you know. And again, the only thing you should modify are the sights. I agree. Um, so um, test your gear. I'm just going to say it. We've said it a million times. Loctite. <laughs> yes. Learn where it goes. 
<laughs> and and if you it. don't know, just bring your stuff. And just say, the, hey, like, guys. A day I, or two early, because yeah. it needs to set for 24 hours. It's supposed to. Right. <laughs> bring your stuff a, a day early and let us help you. Right. We had a, we had a, a if, if we had such a thing as a site finder mm -hmm. on the range, we'd probably, we could probably go out there and pick up $5,000 worth of tritium. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> sites <laughs> because I can't, I mean, the number of times that I've been on the range and someone goes, um, my site flew off. Wow. That's yeah. never happened. Um, yesterday we had a rear site, um, slide out, slide right out, gone. Goodbye. Um, so, t so test your gear, get the right stuff. Um, when it comes to the arc of the student, it's funny because, um, you know, I did it. I showed up. I had all I had 52 magazines and all that shit, you know, for my first shit. And uh, now many times when I come to Fighting Rifle, I have a surplus sling bag with magazines and a, a medical kit and um, a rifle, period. Now, I, I, I will come to class and take it in full. I did rifle a couple weeks ago. I did full kit plates everything but that's mainly just to shake out the you know just to make sure that you know it's still riding right and it's still you know I'm like I, there's nothing that i need to move around or whatever but um, because i keep my chest rig and rifle together mm -hmm. i always take it with my chest rig well but I don't I, do plates you should take right fancy. like if you keep stuff in your car then take that you know i keep a lot of stuff in my car oh yeah you do <laughs> um I, all right so not i'm not i'm not saying this to insult anyone okay i'm saying this Mostly the people that are going to hear this already know what I'm about to uh, already know that I'm I'm not saying it out of a out of a condescending or or like critical critical way. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of students that come through here who's um, who could do the most good for themselves to be to be prepared for whatever bad might happen in their life if they just went for a walk once, a, uh, you know, a couple times a week. <laughs> like um, there are a lot of dudes in particular who come through here and they can shoot really good, mm -hmm. but they could not run a hundred yards. Um, and they definitely could not carry me 50. So for what it's worth, um, it's a martial lifestyle, you know. And you're coming from a place like, cause I'm, I've lost 70 pounds uh, as of like so far since having Gatlin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're you get a, you get, a, you get, you get a window within which you get a lot of slack because like you made you made three yeah, human but i'm past that it's two years now like i'm okay, past the all window right, all right but you're coming from a place to where you've made those changes yourself right i've been dead yeah, yeah. you've made those changes. <laughs> so, like, so it's right. not coming from a judgmental place it's no. coming from a we care about you place. right yeah like i mean so like, we're all constantly working right. on so that stuff. you know it's great if you can shoot straight and do all that but um Man, for a lot of people, your quality of life and the people that care about you and everything else, you know, just think about how you might could improve your fitness before you get to class. Yeah. That's what I'm that's why I'm bringing it up, because the thing you can do to make your class experience better is be able to participate in the class in the way that the class is constructed. Having said that. If don't wait until you're where no. you want to right. be. Right. And don't no matter your physical limitations we will find a way to make it work for right. you. We have had people come through that were in wheelchairs, right. deaf. Right. We, uh, I'm pretty, did blind we have in a one blind, eye? Yeah, blind. Uh, no, we've yeah. never had a full blind. Uh, no, I think that he was <laughs> legally, like he could see shapes and things like okay, that. Okay, all right. And, but we, uh, a guy I did a video with last week, uh, cut his, this finger off, lost his trigger finger. Right. Like we will find a way to make it work for you. Right. So, always be working on yourself but yeah. don't don't wait to hit a certain goal before you get here right so yeah so come as soon as you can mm -hmm. and if the if if as soon as you can is six months from now then spend the six the next six months like making sure that you have the right gear making sure that you have the right mindset preparing yourself physically we had a student in class yesterday that was unable to do one of the ground drills no problem Skip the part you cannot physically do. Yeah. Do the rest. You're better off having done 80% of the drill than none. 
the mm -hmm. student is gonna, you know, gonna finish class today, and they're gonna have been, they're gonna be way better off for having been here. If they had waited until they might be able to do the one thing they couldn't do, they'd be that much further behind. Yep. So come as you are, but if you have the time, um, always be working on it. Always be, you know, always be trying to get better. Um, and then I guess the other thing I would say is, um, whatever, whatever your expectation is, the student that I was talking to yesterday, she was like, I thought it was going to be camo bros and people yelling and, you know, and she was like, I, it, it you know, and it's just not, no. it's just not that it's, it's people. That's the all, minority. Yeah. It's pe well, and you know what? Those people figure out real quick that like, okay, not here. So like knock that shit off yeah. or you got to go. Mm -hmm. Like we, we police this place pretty rigorously. And if you, if you, um, so like I tell people a lot that like, if you meet an asshole before nine in the morning, that's unfortunate. That's pretty early to meet an asshole. But if you meet four more before lunch, you're the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you're the <laughs> asshole. So if you show up here and every, and you have conflict and controversy with a, with a lot of people, it's you. So fix that or get the fuck out. So, and it'll happen. Like yeah. there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a blacklist of people that um, are not, are <clears throat> not going to come back here. They earned it. Right. Yes. Um, so uh, I don't know what else you got. I think like open mind, mm -hmm. um, showing up like you sh you're, you're walking out of your house. And just uh, set aside your expectations. Yeah. It's not going. It's not going to be what the your only expectation ha that you should have is that like whatever experience you're having, as long as you've talked about it here and we say it's normal, like believe us. Yeah, uh, the expectation that you should have is that you're going to leave better than you arrived. Yep. That's the only expectation. All the other stuff about oh, I'm going to shoot this. I'm going to the, the dudes are going to be like this and the, the blah blah. Just no. Just and we're like. We love brand new shooters because oh, they yeah. don't have bad habits. Especially women. Yeah. <laughs> female shooters, like any female shooter. Yeah. And then all brand new shooters. Right. Um, we aren't judging you for not knowing what you don't know. No. No. So it it makes me like it makes my heart smile well, and when we can do like tweak stuff. Right. And get somebody who was not confident in themselves. Right. To ground fighting, right? In one day, right? And and just culturally, um, you know, I trained jujitsu for a long time. Um, anytime I see a woman walk into a jujitsu place or a, a place like Tactical Response, I'm like, that already took so much courage mm -hmm. because they're already, you know, probably pressing their their boundaries as far as comfort and everything just to walk in the door. So whenever, like, culturally here, women are treated. Like there is, there is, I mean, you're going to be treated like an equal and a partner in this effort. Um, and you're going to be treated with respect. Um, uh, but uh, we, I don't tolerate no. anything else from, no. from these guys. No, no. So, um, yeah, we, we go out of our way to make sure that, that um, whoever shows up here gets a fair shot to, to feel, um, be, like they leave they got they got their money's worth nearly no one ever says that nearly everyone says i can't believe i waited this long mm -hmm. this is what the female student told me yesterday she's like i wish i'd come here so long ago she was like i've been my friend's been telling me to come here for two years and i just kept telling him i don't want I, you know and all the things that all the things that she created in her mind as reasons to not do it turned out to be non-existent and instead what she got was this very positive, safe environment in which she was able to, she, she was telling me that she can't wait to go back and tell her friends that. That's um, awesome. Yeah, that, that you know, you gotta go do this. It's, you know. The so. anxiety is always worse. Yeah. That's why, I, like, I volunteer first. Like, right. when they're like, so who wants to go for it? I do, because I, I need it out of the way. Right. Because my brain hates me most of the right. time. And will I will work myself up into a frenzy over something that is not worth it. Like, show up. Like you walk out of the door with an open mind and you will leave here a better person. Yeah. And, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Mm -hmm. Like I, we're, we're probably all pretty easy to find. Um, you know, just if you, there's, you know, if, if your question is, 
if it's gear related, I, you know, okay, Don't fine. Don't ask me. Well, I, me neither, right? Like, but like, what should I expect? What should I take? What should I, you know, where should I go? What should I do? All those things, that's easy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, well, we, that's, that's no problem. So, um, there's something like, I don't know, like 4,000, 5,000 students a year coming through here. Um, four or 5,000 people a year, and nearly all of them come complete the class and um, would at the very least say that they would do it again, time and money permitting. Yes. Well, that, th those, that many people can't be wrong, right? You can only sell snake oil for so long. So yeah. obviously there's something very, this there's obviously something very real and very positive happening here. So um, I think that's, I think that's it for me. Yep. Okay. Your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.